minutes and we don't have a screen share, what I'd like to do is give you a very brief training on how to pre-qualify your team members. One of the things I notice when I'm out there training, i um, been doing this now for I don't know how many years, I think it's been 15 years. Most of you know that I was a psychologist in my life. And uh, I was uh, at a car wash 15 years ago, met my Juice Plus sponsor, four years later was a national marketing director. Two years later, the company asked me to come on board to uh, uh, be a regional director, and I did that for a while, a West Coast regional director, and now I'm a U.S. director for representative development. Uh, what I noticed out there is that People are so great, reps are so great at sharing our products, but sometimes there's a little bit of stumbling when it comes to sharing our business. And one of the most important things we can do is when we do share our business and somebody wants to come on board, the most important thing we can do is set them up for success. Now we've certainly got the Freedom Revolution and lots of tools for you now, which is yay, we've got all these great tools. But one of the things you want to do is set them up for success by having a business mindset. And so uh, I learned this from my sponsors 15 years ago and I used it very successfully. So basically what I just wanted to tell you are five steps to pre-qualifying your representatives as you sign them up. And here we go. So what you wanna use to do is to use the power of neuro-linguistic programming. That means you repeat a phrase that gets into some, it imprints into someone's brain so they understand. So what you're trying to do is help somebody understand what they need to do to be successful in our business. So let's say that I, that you are my new recruit out there, all of you, thousands of people. Uh, I'd still be an NMD if you were uh, all on my team. Okay. Okay. So you basically say, you know, I'm so glad you're joining us. I think this is a real fit. I'm so excited for you. I uh, want to make sure that you're a good fit for us as well as we're a good fit for you. And what we've noticed over the years is that there are certain qualities that our successful people demonstrate. So for example, successful people in our business are people people. Are you a people person? And then you explore that so that you really get to see that person's talents and gifts and everything else um, uh, so that you can see if they're shy, things like that. Uh, I'm doing this pretty fast because I want to keep you on schedule. The next thing is you say, um, people who are successful in our business are able to put some time into their new business. About how much time per week can you put into the business? And they'll say, well, I don't know how much time do people put in. And then you say something like, uh, uh, well, you know, how fast do you want to go? Uh, and then you talk about that so they understand they're going to have to make room in their life for the new business. The next one is, people who are successful in our business can put some money into a new venture. Will that be a problem for you? And you say it just like that for two reasons. Number one is um, you ask them because they, you know, they need to know that it's $50 to get in, but there's two conferences a year. There's probably a boot camp, some things like that. So uh, if they say, yeah, you know, that is a problem for me. I just could barely get the $50 together. Then you basically say, because that was a difficult disclosure, you would just then say something like, uh, you know, I'm so glad you told me now because we have a bonusing program. As a matter of fact, our entire marketing plan is called position bonusing. Every time you hit a position, you get a bonus. And so what we can do is we can set aside that bonus money so you can afford to be able to go to conferences and things like that. Okay, the next one, number four is, people who are successful in our business are coachable and like to follow a system. Will you let me coach you to success? And here's where you talk about that you are the keeper of their dream. And I also often use a physical demonstration where I talk about, you know, in this business, along the way, your journey to national marketing director and beyond, someone's going to try to steal your dream. It may be your family members, it may be other people, it may be you. So my job is to be the keeper of your dream. And I'm going to keep your dream safe so that if anyone, even you, tries to steal it, I'm going to coach you back. So are you going to let me coach you in this business? Talk about that for a while. And then finally, People who are successful in our business will put their people in front of me right away. And this is where you break into immediately any kind of concerns about three-way connections. Because three-way connections are all about trust. People's fears about three-way connections are that their upline is going to be either pushy or is going to somehow damage their relationship with their prospect. 
or that their prospect is going to feel ganged up on. And all of these are irrational fears because in advance, all this is talked about so that it's a trusting experience. What I would say to you is if you are concerned, uh, tell me how you want me to be with this person. Do you want me to be my New York, let's hit the numbers personality? Do you want me to be a little softer? Uh, are we leading with the mission with this person? Are we leading with the a comp plan, what you know? What are we doing here? And I take instruction from you, and then of course on the call, you're muted out so that you can learn what I would do. So that's basically what I wanted to, to train you on today in my six minutes. I hope you have a great, great regional, and just to let you know, our company believes in each and every one of you, and this is the only business you'll ever find where everybody wants you to succeed. Wow. Thank you so much for this valuable thing. We truly honor you and your time giving to us, even on the fly. You're awesome. Thank you. All right, you guys. So what we're going to do now is I am going to do a little technology. Give me a second here. There we go. Okay, so you need it. I'm going to go over to... Oh, Lisa Paget. Oh, Lisa, I'm bringing you up. Really? Right, Lisa, ready? <coughs> Maybe a PA. I'm ready. Can you hear me? Yeah, baby, it's all you. Okay. Oh my gosh, has this been an amazing morning so far? Yes. I am so excited. I can see myself on the TV behind you. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I'm here to promote, of course, the Pageants Bootcamp. Um, I don't know if a lot of you realize, but we are the originators of the Pageant Boot Camp. We have for 27 years on our 610-acre farm. And I have to share that, you know, we truly have a visionary oh. in our family. Um, my mother and father-in-law, Judy and Leslie Pageant, were the ones that actually signed up in the business years ago, and my husband joined. And then, of course, I came along. And then I also, we have um, Bobby's younger sister, Tracy Reeves. And we're actually hosting uh, the Pajama Regional at her house. Tracy, are you here? I'm here. There she is. Hi, girl. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yep, everyone's waving at you. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, you know, my father in really was a visionary. to have a place where we could um, cast vision with our team. And one day, the company called us and said, hey, would you be open to letting the whole entire um, organizations from other companies, from other teams come and be a part of what you're doing? And we said, absolutely. And so here we are 27 years later, you know, really just kind of started something that just happened on our family farm. Um, you know, Jay Martin has a joke. He says that um, we have the most national marketing directors in a square mile anywhere in the world. Uh, we've got five <laughs> living here on the wow. farm, which is awesome, and so it, it's been incredible. Uh, so um, I would like to share with you, we have a boot camp coming up in November. You know, what better way than to keep the momentum going in your business from conference to our boot camp? And our boot camp is located in Waynesboro, Georgia, and we have an incredible boot camp. It's November 9th, 10th, and 11th. And we have one of the most awesome lineups. We have none other than Carrie and Mickey Dago, uh, NMDs and 100 Club Plus 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 members. And of course, if you've ever been around Carrie, he is contagious. And we just have such an amazing time with him. Uh, we have Meredith Martin, Senior VP from the Home Office of uh, North American Sales. I have uh, something special to share with you. Meredith Martin has never been to our boot camp, so she is a pageant boot camp virgin. Okay, so <laughs> she's going to have an amazing time at this That's boot camp. That's a fun boot camp. Uh, we've got Dr. David Jessica. Phillips and Heidi Phillips who will be our medical speaker. We've got Courtney Kersey. She's a 39 club member, and we also have Gretchen Bogaz, 24 club member, and just also, she's just amazing. I love her heart. I love her story. So... Let me share with you what you have to do to register. I want to give a shout out to Jake Rude. You know, he has brought um, the pageant family into the high tech, and we have our own website, okay? So it's pageant JP Bootcamp. P A D G E T T J P Bootcamp.com. And you can go there. Registration will open up September 1st. 
Do not miss out. We usually fill up within the first 24 hours, yeah. uh, but I just wanted to share that. And with that being said, I would love to give away a free boot camp ticket uh, to the pageant boot camp. And, you know, we draw these names randomly, and we did it right before. And I don't have the list. I have no idea who's on the list. And we did it right before I got on, and Wait. it's number 68. And <laughs> let me tell you, this is, this is a $175 value, but number 68 is Catherine Caffey. So, Catherine, way to go. I am so excited. Again, we do not know who was on, on the, um, the ticket, the number when we draw it. So, Catherine, congratulations, and y'all don't miss out on this boot camp. Thanks, Courtney. What? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. <laughs> Sorry, I had to unmute. Apologize about that one. Awesome, awesome. Okay, you guys, I hope y'all are having fun. These giveaways are going to continue to happen, so hang on. We've got an awesome, inspiring story now. Uh, a guy, Brett Fusco, Dr. Brett Fusco from Canada. Hold on, Brett, let me unmute you. Hey, Brett, can you hear me? Absolutely, can you hear me? Aha, uh -huh, it's all you. Take it away. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you so much for uh, well, the honor of being able to share my story with everybody. Um, as uh, as Courtney said, my name is Dr. Brent Pasco. I am a second-generation chiropractor in the Edmonton area in Alberta, Canada. I'm um, actually uh, right next to Lauren Lungel, so we, uh, we work together a fair amount. I had the pleasure of actually walking the stage with her in Phoenix as NMDs, which was an incredible experience, and anybody who was there knows that uh, I think Phoenix Conference is my favorite. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but it's my favorite. Um, either way, uh, I was brought up to share my, my story, my journey to health, and uh, even, and even the, where the business has taken me as, uh, as not only a chiropractor, but um, as, a, as a step outside of that in my personal life. And uh, my story and my journey to health really uh, started well, since I was born. As a second generation chiropractor, I grew up in a, a healthy household. We weren't given a lot of uh, junk food, we weren't given a lot of, of uh, bad health uh, choices. We were really given a, a, a good push right out of the gate as healthy kids, and because of that, me and my brothers, uh, my brothers and I, very rarely get sick. And it was something we noticed right away when we were in school. Unfortunately, didn't get to miss a lot of school, right? But uh, it's it's a mindset that I carried forward. And when I saw my friends as I got older, and I started noticing how often they got sick, I'd always wonder why. But uh, I realize now, of course, in, in retrospect, that uh, it was because of all these things my family my family gave me uh, the home cooked meals, the uh, eating whole food that that ideology was built in so juice plus right away made a complete sense to me but as a teenager uh, you don't know what you don't know and you think you know but you don't i think you're so smart at that age but my journey to health really began in 2003. in 2003 i got a major car accident um, i fractured my skull in two places i had road rash covering a lot of my body um, and i severely broken my left ankle to the point where they weren't even sure what was going to what was going to happen if they were able to even repair the foot. Uh, but their number one thing was my head injury. Uh, it's something that I uh, recently started talking about a lot more because uh, it's difficult for me to talk about because of how, how devastating it was. My ankle injury was bad, but the head injury was devastating. Uh, I literally changed overnight. I became a completely different person, and a lot of it wasn't always for the better. There's been a long road to recovery. And uh, the initial thought was that I wasn't going to survive the night. I pushed through that. Uh, then they weren't too sure what my functionality would be. Would I be able to um, walk again? They weren't sure. Would I be able to function in society? Would I be able to hold a job? These were all questions they didn't have. Uh, the great injury that I had, 80% of people don't survive the first night. So I was very lucky. Um, I was My body was very strong. Uh, it was able to push through. And so after my brain kind of calmed down, they figured out, that, okay, I'm not going to die. Everything is okay. We've got to get to recovery. Then they started focusing on my ankle. And I broke up my ankle and I obliterated it. It looked like mush. Mm. And it was so bad, like I said, they weren't sure if they were going to repair it. But I had a great surgeon. Um, it was, uh, I had a fantastic medical crew taking care of me. And they did a great job. They put me back together. And then after after staying in the hospital for, for a while, they sent me home. And we kind of asked, okay, yeah, that was a bad ankle injury. Is there anything I can do to, to speed it up or, or help the process? And the answer we got was no. There's nothing you can do. Just go home. If it heals, it heals. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Then why you come back for regular checkups? So we did that. Three weeks go by. I had to change the, the cast out. They re x rayed it. No healing. And they're like, that's okay. It's only three weeks. Another three weeks go by. I come back, still doing nothing, staying at home, crutching around. 
um, six weeks later, usually when most bones heal, still no healing. They're like, that's okay. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of trauma to your body. We'll push it for another six weeks. Come on back. No weight bearing, crutch your ass. So six weeks go by. I come back. They re x ray it again, and they're like, okay, well, we've got a bit of a problem now. Is that the fracture that you had, not only is it not healing, but it's starting to die. Uh, the bone that is normally has this great blood supply, um, they're thinking that it got cut off. Yes, and now I'm in a lot of trouble. Oh. What this means is a complete fusion of my ankle. This means that uh, all my sports that I was doing, of course, Canada, playing hockey, uh, that would be gone. Snowboarding, gone. Running would be gone. Walking would be difficult. And 17 years old, that's a kind of a heavy pill to swallow. This is when things got real. They gave me six more weeks to heal or they were going to fuse my ankle. Mm. And so... I remember that drive home, my dad was next to me, and I remember sitting there and be like, okay. The entire mindset before that was, oh, it's just a broken ankle, this happens all the time, but now it became very real. And so we went home, and this is when we kind of went into panic mode. Um, my father being a chiropractor started reaching out to everybody, and we had these friends, and their names are Mark and Yvonne, or Mark Aaron and Yvonne Cunningham, and they're friends of ours. My, my dad had been on Juice Plus for a little bit, and I helped him with his knees after... Uh, injuries with football and multiple surgeries and he's like you know what it's just fruits and vegetables it's not gonna hurt so i went on it and uh i was doing a few little exercises too i could contrast that we're basically reaching out to anything i mean anything we could at this time but i went on juice plus consistently and heavily like i think i took i was taking a double dose of the greens and reds at that time as that's what they had and i went all in because i was in panic mode and so six weeks go by we're pulled in and we uh, we get the x-ray, and we back in the day it wasn't digital, so they're holding it up, and the, the doctor comes, and he grabs it, he puts it up on the box, and he's looking at it, and he kind of holds it up to the light, and then he changes it, and he disappears for a bit, then he comes back, and this entire thing lasts about 15 minutes, but it felt like a lifetime, because this was the moment I was going to be told if I was good or if I was not good, and I was going to have to have massive surgery to change my, that would change my life forever. And he came back in, and I remember he looked at us, and very bluntly just said, it's healed. And I was quiet. I didn't know what to say. I just kind of sat there, just kind of stunned, because I was expecting the worst. That's where my mind went. And the doctor very bluntly asked, too, he said, well, what did you do? And my mom was sitting next to me, and she's like, well, just fruits and vegetables. And he went, nah, that can't possibly be it. And I remember that conversation, and it didn't really shake me now, but as a practicing doctor, it it shakes me a lot now. Because um, if I would have known that at the beginning, the healing my body would have gone through, the path it would have taken, how many people before me would have would have had a, a smoother road? And, and so that's really why I have it in my practice. My belief in the product is unshakable. My family will be on it for the rest of their lives. I can't pay me enough money not to take it. I know what it's done for me. Now, my story is very dramatic, of course. Um, not a lot of people will relate to that. Um, and I never understood why it truly helped me until a few years ago. And I came to the conclusion that uh, during that process, that, that time of me healing, my brain injury was so bad that my body was spending everything it had to try to heal, to try to survive. And at the end of the day, it had nothing left to heal the rest of me. Wow. And so when I flooded it with every little piece of Lego that it needed to rebuild my body, it took and was finally like, oh, I have what I need. And it was able to push into my, my leg and was able to help me heal. Um, now, that was very much under the surface. Uh, that was not something that you can really feel. Uh, prevention is key. Uh, even though you may not have a massive injury or something you can go through like that, uh, knowing what it's done for me outside of that, how little I get sick, how healthy my kids are, uh, how healthy my family is compared to the average person is something that you can't put a price on. So for me, like I said, my belief that is absolutely unshakable. Um, but as passionate as I am about that, the business side to this um, is, is just as powerful to me. Uh, I went through chiropractic college. Uh, I walked out with about two hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, um, and then we're told on top of that we have to open our practice, expect thirty to fifty thousand more to open, and then expect three years of no positive income until your business is built. This is what we're taught in our business classes, and it's ridiculous. Uh, very quickly, within the first six to eight months of me opening up my practice, we were drowning in my my student loans. It was ridiculous. Um, that light at the end of the tunnel, I thought I reached, and now that light got a little bit further away. And so when I started implementing Juice Plus into my practice, my patients started getting healthier. I started receiving a paycheck because uh, it was directly related to how many people I've helped, which is always feels good. Um, I started being able to buy groceries. I started being able to pay back part of my student loan, my entire student loan, and then it's starting to pay back my 
my mortgage and my student loans, and then it pulled me out of my student loan debt. And because of Juice Plus, I was able to actually get completely out of debt, which is an incredible feeling uh, for anybody, anybody that's ever felt that kind of wave and that pressure over your head. Uh, it is absolutely incredible to lift. And as a guy, as the provider, um, it's it's kind of a big deal to be able to come home and know that your family's taken care of. Because as Lauren said, for those who are listening to her, three years ago, we went through a massive recession, our oil drop, and people lost their jobs left and right. Uh, people went from making beautiful income to literally, I don't know where I'm going to work. Mm. And it was such a hard time for a lot of people. And at that time, I had a practice in an oil city. And we saw the population drop by almost 60% because people had to go move to to go find work. So having this plan B was absolutely vital. And that's why we're, in Alberta especially, we're so passionate about this this plan B, which is quickly becoming my plan A. Um, because the other side of this too is that as a private business owner, I don't get benefits. Uh, I don't, when I'm not at work, I'm not making money. Uh, there's a whole bunch of downsides to it. The risk is really high. Uh, so Juice Plus rolls in and just $50 investment to create to be able to invest into a life that you can build is absolutely incredible in my mind. Um, now you've heard my story about my leg, but my, my brain injury was also something that's really difficult for me to work with because um, even though I'm only 32, I, I'm finding that the work that I'm doing is starting to really pull on my body. And uh, my dad asked me a question last weekend is why I'm in Jesus Plus what makes me stay. I've come to the realization that my physical body will fail me before my mental does. And so this business is my future. I plan to retire by the time I'm 40 because I don't know if I'm physically going to be able to push past that and still be present and live in my everyday life. So this is uh, this is plan A for sure. Uh, so if you're even thinking about like what it could do for you for $300, $500, $1,000 a month, uh, please, please, please take a really solid look at it because it can change everything in the world. Uh, but thank you so much for listening and uh, enjoy the rest. Oh my gosh, but thank you. Whoops, I think my, my video, just a second. <laughs> okay, can you guys see? Okay, wonderful. All right, but thank you so much, you know, for sharing your inspirational um, message and story about your physical challenges that you went through. You know, we're thanking God that you are doing so well. And also that this Juice Plus business has been a huge solution for you and your family and that not only are you changing lives by sharing Juice Plus, but also helping other people learn more about this incredible business. So I just wanted to thank you, Brett, for your story. Uh, okay, so I have the pleasure of introducing our next speaker. Uh, this gal is a no-nonsense kind of gal. She's awesome. I love her. I love her realness and authenticity. Uh, but I'm going to be introducing Jill Herman. And uh, Jill sent me her bio, and it's awesome. And you know, Jill said that she gave up her nursing scrubs for good when she reached national marketing director in 2012. Uh, she built NMD while raising three kids under nine and working over 50 hours per week in the hospital. Jill has trained on the main stage at least twice, and she's led three breakout sessions as early as sales coordinator. Uh, she was also the lead trainer for Q School um, in 2013, and she trained at the NMD Bootcamp as a brand new national marketing director. And she's also been nominated for the Elton Awards for the 24 Club Member of the Year and won the Elton Award for 12 Club Member of the Year. And after many tough life lessons, including a divorce, Jill truly feels that she's had the biggest breakthrough of her career when she discovered that she was sabotaging her own success and doing too much managing and chasing and not enough building and leading. And resulting, she's resulting in all that, she lost her spark and her desire to grow her team. So she went to work on herself and the magic happened. You know, this shift in mindset led to a rebuilding phase that has no end in sight. Her team has never been more engaged nor more self-motivated. They're on fire. And um, she'll reach 50 Club this summer with no pushing or managing or stress. She's just speaking from the heart. And let me tell you check. this, the proof is in her paycheck. Bonus. It's up 66% in the last 24 months. Can I get a whoop whoop for Jill? That's awesome. 
Oh. <laughs> Jill is very happily married to her best friend and her forever, TK, and they are raising five teenagers and oh. two new puppies in their dream home in the country. And what you might not know about Jill, a really fun fact, is that Jill is terrified of heights and jumped from a telephone pole 35 feet in the air while harnessed um, during a personal development training course in 2016. Well, what you don't know is that she set the record for standing on the pole the longest while she was contemplating the jump. Okay? <laughs> and she was on the pole for exactly one hour and 12 wow. minutes, but then she jumped. So <laughs> wow. I would love to introduce my friend and mentor, Jill Herman. Good job. Thank you so much, Lisa. I was laughing at my own story. Oh my gosh, that is a true story. I stood there for an hour and 12 minutes. Uh, I thought it was maybe about 10 minutes. And uh, it really relates to what I'm going to talk about next. I'm actually deciding to weave that into this training because there are so many life lessons in that hilarious yet not so hilarious story, if you were there. Um, so I had taken this personal development course um, three years ago. And then the final stage, which I wasn't aware of, many people like researched ahead of time. Some of you blueprint people, I don't know if you've ever done the disc profile of some of you who are maybe like C's and S's, you would know ahead of time exactly what was going to happen. You would have researched it. That's not me. Those two people who know me know that I am not that kind of person. I just went there having no idea what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, the final oh, step was something um, very high in the air. So I had no clue what was going to happen. And <laughs> before getting on the telephone pole, the other part of the story that's kind of funny is that we practiced. And the way we practiced is we, I still didn't know what was happening, remember? We stood on a, a picnic table. And we stood there like this, closed our eyes, and we fell into a trust fall with our amazing team that we had there, right? Well, I couldn't do that. I was like, oh, 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 oh. I didn't know until later that the people in charge of the course were like, oh boy, this ain't gonna be good. <laughs> and they were all laughing at me. So I ended up doing the little trust fall and thought, oh, wow, I graduated. This is amazing. No clue. Think about your business right now when I'm saying this. No clue what was up ahead of me. We walked through the woods. I was like, this is amazing. What are we going to do? A scavenger hunt? What are we going to do? Play tag? And I looked up <laughs> and I saw all of these high ropes and telephone poles. And I thought, oh, no, 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 no. This is not going to happen. So the story of me doing that course, I will save for another time. But just that high ropes course and alone could be an hour uh, uh, comedy show and training combined. <laughs> because everybody laughed at me and cried with me for a long, long time. But I did make it through. So when you look at that last moment, when I was on that, I would call it a platform. So telephone pole, but then there was a little platform that we stood on. And I had my entire life had been terrified of heights. And I mean to the point where I, I, I couldn't look over railing. I couldn't go into an elevator and look out the glass. Um, I couldn't, you know, be in a, it, I was that scared. I couldn't be in a hotel and even come within 10 feet of the window. Like that's how scared I was of heights. And you know, that's all a mindset thing, right? It's all fear. So I did the course, got up on that platform and I decided, okay, so I'm not jumping. I've already decided I'm not jumping. What I'm going to do is just, just get myself there um, with the help of the person who was um, in charge of me. Um, think of your sponsor. So what he did was he guided me. He looked me in the eye and said, you're fine. You're fine. We're just going to do this. We're just going to take four steps. And I said, just so you know, I'm not the kind of person who says things just to look cute. I'm not, I'm not playing around. I'm not trying to be cute here. I'm not jumping off that thing. He goes, I know. I know you're not jumping, but let's just walk a little closer. I said, fine, we'll walk a little closer. He got me to a place that I didn't even know I could get to. He took me somewhere I didn't even know was possible for myself just by mentoring me and showing me the way. Now, he couldn't do it for me. He didn't walk for me. He couldn't carry me, but he guided me and inspired me and kept saying, you're doing great. One more step, one more step. So when I got on the platform, I decided, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm doing this because I don't want to be lowered down because lowering down would have been me quitting. Now, there's no problem with failing, right? What if I jumped and I fell or something and it, or something happened? That would be okay. But, but, but quitting was not an option at that point. So 
So I stood there for what you now know as an hour and 12 minutes. It was freezing. It was pouring down rain. We were all shivering. Oh. And in that moment, right before I stepped off, now you're not allowed to jump. You literally have to just stand still and step to the left and fall. And then it catches you. Yeah. And you can imagine yeah. how scary that was for anyone, let alone me. So right before I stepped off, I remember thinking about my Just Plus business, thinking about my life, and I said to myself, this is the platform of my life. This is the platform of my business. This is everything that has been standing in my way my entire life. This is every fear, every limiting belief, every <laughs> crap story in my head that tells me I'm not good enough, and if I do not do this, I will never, I will never be okay with it. And so, yes, it took a while. I ended up stepping off, and it was terrifying, terrifying. I don't even like the feeling of going between floors on an elevator. That scares me. So scary. Once I fell, and it caught me, and then I swung up. I swung back, and it was still scared. And then all of a sudden, my crying turned into laughing. And I screamed with joy. And I yelled to everybody. I did it. I did it. Now, they all knew I could do it, but I didn't know I could do it. Just like everyone training you today, we all believe in you 100%. But you have to make the choice. You have to take the step. You have to jump off the platform, step off the platform. You have to decide that you're going to take that risk and walk through that fear. Because remember, courage is not the absence of fear. It's stepping through it anyway, because what's on the other side is so sweet to you that you're not going to live without it, no matter what that is for you. So after I did that and I had that moment, and I did kind of laugh at myself and felt kind of silly, they let me know that it was an hour and 12 minutes. One of the trainers said, I was about ready to have them push you. <laughs> I also found out later that I was so, and again, think of your business here. I was so wrapped up in myself. I was so wrapped up in my own fear and my own story and me, 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 that I not only forgot that all the people below me wanted to go home, because I was second to last, there was someone behind me. There was somebody behind me patiently waiting who's not afraid of heights and was ready to just smash this thing. And she stood back there quietly and didn't say a word, freezing in the rain for an hour and 12 minutes. And I, I will never forget hearing that because I had no idea she was there because I was too worried about myself. So when we look at our Juice Plus journey, you know, there are so many different platforms. There are platforms that maybe aren't very high. There are platforms that are so high that you're terrified, and only you know what those are. When you look at people in the Juice Plus business, you may look at people just like I did when I was on that road course. I looked at people that had no fear. They were just swinging like monkeys from thing to thing, and I thought, how are they doing that? I was mad. I was jealous. I was ticked off. I was mad at myself. I was embarrassed, and I was paralyzed. I did not know how to be them. So some of you look at people like us who are training you and you think that, right? Remember, everybody has their own strengths. Everybody has their own weaknesses. Everyone has their own journey. So what's interesting is when I looked at those people who were doing so much better than me, and remember I was comparing myself and feeling embarrassed and feeling bad about myself. Do you know that in the weeks prior to that in that personal development course, I was kicking their butts in some things. Like they were terrified to do some of the things that I was doing, right? But it just depends on the person, on their journey, on their background, on their childhood, on their mindset, and on what comes up, what they come up against. Certain things in this business are going to be easy peasy for you. Some people are afraid to have events. Some people are afraid to even talk to people. Some people aren't afraid of any of that, but you get in front of a room and they're afraid. So just know that we're all on this journey together and it's okay. Okay? All right. So. When you're looking at these different platforms in your business, and we're going to get to something called the sharing process. And as we look at that, we're going to look at each step as a, as a little platform that you're going to have to choose whether or not you're willing to step off of. Okay? So is your platform just bringing up Juice Plus? Maybe that alone is scary for you. Even when you get the big, glorious entry of someone sneezing or saying their kids are sick or they're broke, right? It's like kind of a gimme. <laughs> Even sometimes you're like, oh, uh, do I go now? I think I'm going to wait. Um, it kind of reminds me in grade school, I was always afraid to go out on the dance floor, and I wanted to
wanted to so badly. Oh my gosh, I want to be on that dance floor. I couldn't, I couldn't get myself to do it. A couple of times on like at the, at the very end of the dance, but I didn't know it was the end of the dance, I got the courage and I got out there and I was like, hey, this is scary. I look awkward. I'm sweating. Oh, I kind of like this. I'm kind of good at this, right? Like I got into it. By the way, I'm wearing pajamas. Am I the only one wearing pajamas? <laughs> I've heard about the pajama Rachel and I showed up. It's like showing up to a costume party and you're the only one dressed up. So uh. I'm like, okay, I didn't just go put makeup on the bathroom because I thought I'm supposed to wear pajamas, so maybe I should have no makeup. And then I saw the other speakers and I did put makeup on. So anyway, when I would be at the dance when I was a kid, I'd finally get the guts up to do it. And guess what would happen? This is your last dance. And I would go, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not ready for that. I just decided to have this breakthrough. I need to keep going. And it was over. So when you look at these different platforms in your business, you're going to decide how long you stand on that platform. You're going to decide, and it's okay, by the way, however long you stand, but there is an outcome. I won't say consequence. I will say a result and an outcome. There is an inevitable outcome of waiting and putting it off and, and standing there and letting the fear stop you. There is. And you just have to be okay with it. So maybe it's asking if people are open. Maybe it's sending the video. Maybe it's asking to set up the follow-up. Isn't that scary? That awkward, you know, following up? Uh, maybe it's asking for the sale. Maybe all that's fine for you. Maybe for you, you are deliberately recruiting people who you feel safe with, who you know will say yes who you know will do whatever you say because they look up to you. Is that your platform? What would happen if you would decide to invite someone into your business who you admire and who makes your world nervous? All right. So the most important thing is to be okay with however long you're standing there, figuratively, but don't be okay with giving up and, and getting lowered down, no matter what. I know you've heard it from other people, but give this time. You're not going to be the same person a year from now, a day from now, a month from now, two years from now that you are today. And if you choose to keep in this personal development course that we call a Juice Plus Business, you will grow and evolve. It's, it's, it's unavoidable if you stay in it. And as you grow, your courage will grow, your business will grow, everything will grow. All right, so speeding up the process. Okay, so how do you speed up that process? Well, a lot of ways, but the number one way is personal development. Now, this business is 90% mindset, 90% mindset. It's only 10% mechanics. Now, the mechanics are important. We have to have mechanics. I'm getting ready to talk to you about mechanics. We have to have mechanics. Like, what do you say to people? You know, how do you ask them if they're ready to order? Those are important skills. But I will tell you what, it doesn't matter what any one of us teaches you. It doesn't matter what I tell you. Some of you are waiting. Get to the punch. I want to hear the secret. How do I avoid feeling awkward when I follow up? Don't get to the point. What's interesting is it doesn't even matter what's after what I'm going to say now if you don't hear what I'm saying right now. In other words, the, the mechanics are important, but they will be absolutely sabotaged by the mindset every day, all day long. All right, so personal development, working on your money mindset, working on your own self-worth. There are a million ways to do it. Ask your upline support team to help you. We are believe in the product and business and coming up with your own personal why. That's going to give you that, you know, I've got the guts to share, right? It's going to get you by while you're doing the personal development, by the way. Okay? So my story is that when I heard about the Juice Plus opportunity or Juice Plus business, it came in the form of someone just sharing the product with me. And I was one of those people, and they are out there, who knew they were looking for a business opportunity, knew they wanted something other than their current career, and did not know that this industry even existed. Right? So when she shared and, and they shared the product with me, what was behind it for me was a life-changing business opportunity. Yes, I needed the product because everybody does, but I will tell you what, I was drowning in debt. I was in a job. I will describe it this way. And you have people in your life who are living this way behind the scenes, and you don't know it. On the outside, I was a size two. I had this perfect little family with three little kids. I had a great job as a nurse. I was in like really intense settings like neonatal intensive care and cardiac, and people really thought I was kind of a smarty pants nurse, and I was pretty proud of that, right? Looked really good on the outside. What was going on behind the scenes wasn't horrible, but it was not good. What was going on behind the scenes and the reason this business was such a blessing to my family and changed the outcome of my life is that when I would go
go to work every day, I describe it this way. I'm allergic to wool, and I felt like I was wearing a wool suit that was three sizes too small every day. I wasn't in the right place. I, I, was, I, I was good at it, but it did not, it wasn't my thing. I was controlled by the hours of the job. I was controlled by them telling me what I was worth financially, you know, paying me by the hour. Um, I, I just knew this was not my destiny, but I didn't know you all existed. I didn't know this world existed. And this is why we have to share with everybody. So when I said yes to this business, the other thing behind the scenes is that I was very insecure. All of us have issues, let me tell you. Everybody has insecurities. Even Catherine Lee has fears and insecurities. Can you believe it? It's true. She's my friend, I know it's true, right? Everybody does, because she's human. So I had such fear and such insecurity and such anxiety about who I was as a person. And when this business came into my life, I saw it as a ticket out of the job, a ticket into getting what I needed, which was out of that job and home to my children, et cetera. Happy ending, yes, it did happen. But there's something in between that you may not know. What I didn't know is that I needed this business for something that was gonna happen in the future. One of those moments Catherine talked about, and I didn't know how much my children were going to need me to be in this business in the future. So without giving you all of the gory details, I was in a marriage that um, where addiction was a real problem um, with my spouse. And I had a moment where my children were, were um, almost in a very, very serious car accident with their dad. And his addiction had been a problem for many, many, many years, but it was getting worse. Uh -huh. um, this business in this community is what saved me, what gave me the personal growth I needed to grow through that and out of it and step away from it, and the income that I needed to support my family. He ended up not, be, not working for four years while I was working 50 hours a week as a nurse, growing my Juice Plus business, and never seeing my children. Hardly ever seeing them, missing out on almost everything. He got all the fun time with them, and all I did was work. And it was really difficult. So anyone can do this business, I'm telling you. If I could do it, and by the way, I was a hot mess with the, with the capital H and a capital M. I was the person who would back out of my driveway, forget my purse, go back in, come back, forget what else I was doing, you know, hit my trash can, uh, forget where I was going, end up being late. I mean, I was not uh, that, that perfection that you see that some people seem to carry on, which by the way, they're not perfect. People who act perfect are hiding something. So I was the last person you would have recruited. I was probably the last wow. person you would have ever thought would do well in this business or that you'd want on your team, even though wow. we'd say, oh, Jill's really nice, she's fun, she's funny, but man, she's a hot mess. She has no time. And she's a bit of a hot mess. Anyone can do this if they're teaching her to play. They right now. Sure. <laughs> can consistently do the work. So after I made National Marketing Director, it was four years later, I realized that even though I was working on myself, there was so much more to do. See, this is why it's a journey and it's why you have to give this time. So after National Marketing Director, I needed even more growth because what I was doing was I was enabling my distributors, my team members, my friends, the way I had enabled my husband. And enabling is not love. Enabling actually hurts people. I was doing the work for people. I was not letting them be independent. I was not empowering them. I felt like I could do it better and I wanted to take the burden off of them. I was the girl that couldn't say no to anybody. My own team, didn't matter if they called during my dinner hour, I would answer. It didn't matter what they needed, I would do that call, I would do that event. Oh, you've already hosted six in-home presentations, no problem, I'll help you with number seven. It didn't matter if you were on my team or not, if you called me, I would train your team. I would get on the phone, and that truly wasn't because I wanted to pay attention, it's because of guilt. I felt guilty for growing, guilty for being successful, and I felt like that was the only way to be, I didn't know any better. So did my business fall apart? No, not at all. You know how it didn't? because I went wide and that's what you want to do. I sponsored a lot of frontline team members and went wide and that's your security. My paycheck stayed very stable. But what happened is that when my personal life crumbled to the point where I was, I was literally, well, figuratively, I imploded from the stress of working for everybody, doing all the work for everyone, enabling people, not empowering people, and having a marriage falling apart and addiction controlling my home, I absolutely couldn't do it anymore. I was in bed for no less than three weeks. True story. I had complete adrenal fatigue, couldn't get out of bed, 
was so, so physically I could notice it. Emotionally, I was completely spent. And the, my paycheck barely even wavered. So what happened is I decided that I needed to work on myself even more. And I, did, I dug deep. I never unplugged from this business. And I, never, I recommend you never doing that either. Never unplugged. Never walked away from my team. But what I did do is decide not for a little while to bring business in. I decided I would just be there for my team if they needed me, learn how to not enable, learn how to lead, learn how to keep a little bit of a healthy boundary, and work on myself and work on and help my children through the crisis we were going through. Why do I share that with you? I share that with you to be real, but I also share it with you because there's a lesson in there for everybody. We always have to look at ourselves. If we're out there looking at everybody else and not looking at ourselves, we're never going to grow, and our business cannot grow. So what I realized is that the enabling was still there, and it was it was in a part of the culture of my team. It was how I was leading, and that is no criticism of my team. Trust me, that was my doing and my fault, no one else's. They didn't get to grow because of me. So when I did that, that growth and worked on myself, um, amazing things happened, and, and um, Lisa mentioned that our team is on fire, and it's true. I took a few years um, of, of, of not bringing in new business. Am I telling people to do that? No. But I knew that's what I needed to do. And I worked on myself to the point where I learned how to break through what I just shared with you. And now I know how to lead. I know how to inspire, not to enable. I know how to create healthy independence. And because of that, my team is flourishing, not because of me. It has nothing to do with me. Their success and their failures are not mine. They are their own. And you can have that too. Your net worth cannot exceed your self-worth. And when you bring people into this business and invite them in, whether, whether, whether you want to call it inviting, recruiting, attracting, the people you personally bring in will be, in my opinion and in my experience, a direct reflection of your own self-worth and your own self-development. You will see those people every time you bring people in as you grow, the caliber of them, of course, not as human beings and as their, not their soul and who they are truly, but the caliber of their mindset how they show up in life will improve as you improve. And then you're gonna amaze yourself. Okay, so what is this whole sharing process thing? The reason I decided to share this with you today is because part of my sort of getting back into this business, um, and I wanna be clear that I never quit, uh, but getting back into this business and deciding that I'm, I'm gonna now do work differently and bring people in. Um, this past January, I personally brought in 10 frontline distributors, 10. Two of those distributors are still actively working and talking to me, and I want you to hear that loud and clear. How could that be? With 10 years experience and all this growth, how could that be? Because that's just how it is. It's not your fault when that happens. Everyone has their own journey. So two out of the 10 are still engaged and excited. One of them, the 10th that I brought in, the 10th person, what if I had stopped recruiting? The 10th person fast-tracked to her 2,000 plus in 10 days and did her fast-track sales coordinator in, in about three and a half months. So I got back to work, as I said, and then we went to the spring conference. I'm sure most of you were there, and I made a decision. I made a decision that what our team was going to focus on, leading by example, primarily with myself first, and seeing who would follow, is one, GoPro, the book. Two, focusing on our business stories. How many of you don't even have your business story? How many of your team members have their product story? And then when it comes to the business story, they're like, whoa, 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 I don't know. Right? Knowing the business story, embracing it, and being powerful with it, and sharing it like crazy. The next thing was the sharing process. So the sharing process that I'm about to share with you, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, um, is a way for you and your team members to have this sort of net to fall into, something to hold on to, something for your team members when they're nervous, and they're not really sure you know, what to do next in that process of, okay, I've decided to have enough courage to open my mouth and share these plus, ah! right? And then at the very end where I take the order or I realize I need to say next, what happens in between? Now, I agree with Lauren 100% that really we just need to share from our heart and not worry about script or try to have the perfect words. But the other thing I realize is some people need this. 
Some people don't have the confidence yet to just go out and share from their heart. They want something to hold on to. <coughs> just like not everybody can eat the way they need to eat, so they have shred 10. So the sharing process, it, that to me was the gift that our team has now opened and, and embraced, and we make it part of our training and our, our on-ramping, and it has grown us a lot of success in the last 12 months. So now, you're like, what the heck is it? <laughs> so here's what it is. And I'm gonna give the actual document, I'll put it on the Facebook group, in that Facebook group for Jenna Regional, and I'll even share with you, I have a four minute recording of me going over the nuts and bolts, okay? All right, so here's what it is. This is the sequence that happens between the time you decide to share and the time you are taking the order. Now, this isn't about having the perfect words, but this is gonna be sort of like a skeleton that you can fall, 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 hold on to and follow. And then you get to add your own spice, your own flair, your own style, and that's what we want you to do. When you have team members, by the way, who have people in what I call juice, it's horrible. Tell me it's not horrible. OMG, really? You have these messages out there, it's like Bueller, Bueller, Hello? Hello? <laughs> Did you get my message? I'm pretty sure I told you we were going to be talking again. And then you feel like a stalker, and then you see them somewhere, and you're like, okay, I'm not looking at you. And you make sure you don't bring up Juice Plus, because you don't want them to think you're bringing up Juice Plus, even though you want to bring up Juice Plus. <laughs> but yet you send them a video three days ago. Okay, tell me that doesn't drive you crazy. It happens to everybody, and this is going to help you through it, okay? All right. So each one of these steps you can look at as a mini platform. And uh, some of them are going to stick. You're going to be stickier than others for you. The first is just saying, "I have no idea." It's so easy. I have no idea. You know why you say that? Because it's disarming. Because it makes the other person really comfortable, and it makes you really comfortable. Because guess what? You don't. You don't have any idea. I don't have any idea, Susie Creasy. I have no idea if what I'm going to say is going to resonate with you. So how could I assume I do? But if I say it out loud, it makes me feel better. It makes you feel better. So saying, I have no idea. And you can follow that with whatever you want. I have no idea if you're gonna be as excited about this as I am. Susie, I have no idea what you're gonna think about this, but, right, just I have no idea. The second one is explaining why that why you're thinking of them, why you're sharing with them. It's, it's, the, old, it's the old W I I F T. What's in it for them, or what's in it for me? You want them to know what's in it for them. And you also want them to know that you care about them and why you thought of them. So you could say something like, I thought of you because, or you could say, you know what? This is why I'm not gonna keep this from you. This is why you came to mind. I thought of you because, this is why I thought of you. So add your own style, but it's, it's a way to let them know why you thought of them, right? Connecting with them and what's in it for them. Here would be an example. So Susie, I have no idea, X, Y, Z, but I'm gonna tell you why I thought of you. I know that you're a nurse, I know you're a mom, and I know you're a grandma, and I know you have the cutest grandbabies in the world. <laughs> she wanted me to say that. So, uh, but I know that about you. And so I'm not really sure if what I'm gonna share with you is gonna resonate with you like it did with me, but I have this feeling at night, and I don't wanna keep it from you. So asking them, I have no idea, and sharing with them why you thought of them, you can also say why you're not gonna keep it from them. Do you see how that makes them feel like you've got something special? And as you're saying these things to them, you're talking to yourself. You're talking to yourself. I'm talking to myself when I say this. Your new people are going to love this because it calms the nerves. It makes them feel so much better as they're talking to the person they're talking to themselves. I have no idea. This is why I thought of this person. This is why I'm not going to keep it from them. Does that make sense? The third one is, Sharing your story. You could ask them or you could just say it. You could say, would it be okay with you if I shared my own experience with this solution? Sure. Who's going to say no? Nobody. If someone says no to that, they're a jerk and they don't get juice plus. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> no juice plus for them, as Lynn Davidson says. No, but if someone says you can't share your story with them, it really well. It's probably going to be one out of a million people. But if you ask, would you be okay with me sharing my story with this, my own experience with this? Sure. And then you share your brief story that has already been crafted and wrapped up with a bow on top and given back to you by your experienced upline, by the way. So you're going to share your story, and then you're going to ask four words. Would you be open? And it's going to feel awkward the first time you do it, because who talks like that, right? But you know what? 
as you practice this, you're going to start saying it in all areas of your life. I swear to you. You're going to say, would you be open to, you're just going to say that. Here's the secret with open. No one wants to admit they're not open. No one. If you say interested, ooh, that doesn't feel good to some people. They feel like you're making an assumption. They kind of feel like you're coming at them. But if you say, would you be open or are you open? Just use the word open and add your own words, right? But something along the lines of, hey, so I have no idea X, Y, Z, but this is what I thought of you and I don't want to keep this from you. And would you be okay with me sharing my own experience? Insert your story. And then, so would you be open to learning a little bit more about this? Would you be open to learning, you know, a little bit more? Would you be open to exploring this a little bit further? Would you be open? Would you be open? And I'm telling you, almost everyone's going to say yes to that. Then the next step, if I would you, and I don't get any credit for that. That comes from the amazing, legendary Eric Flory, who wrote GoPro, by the way. If I would you, oh gosh, you can use this for everything. If I sent you a sample of shakes, would you try them? If I sent you a recipe, would you try it? If I invited you to an event, would you come? If I sent you a link to a video, would you watch it? If I sent you a link to some videos, would you take a look? If I would you, it creates what I call an upfront contract. There's no going back after that. There's nothing pushy about that. And no, that's what everyone's afraid of. You know why? Because I'm asking, if I X, would you Y? And they say, sure. They agreed to it. So we now have a mutual agreement that they're going to watch that video or they're going to do, do whatever we ask. Okay? So if I sent you a link to a couple of short videos, uh, would you take a look? And I have, I'm going to tell you what I always add. This is one of my little secrets. I always say, and I learned it from Cheryl Cortese, our amazing, amazing mentor in my, in my team. Well, I want her team. Um, I say what she says. And people love it. People love it. So I say, if I sent you a link to some short videos, would you take a look? Yeah, I would. Great. Okay, people love these videos. I get great feedback. I am planting a seed that they're going to have a good experience. Now, here's where the dum 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 comes. I'm telling you, if someone's having trouble and they're not getting orders or in that, they're in that weird chase game, it, it, you know, if they've got their story, right, you feel like they're excited about Jesus Plus and they have enough belief that they would talk to people, right, even, even if brand new, and they have their memory driver and they've got their event, right, all this is happening going well, but they're not getting orders, it is that... It is, it is, this is the problem. There's something in the sequence that is a breakdown point. And following this is like a diagnostic. You get to figure out where the breakdown is because you know the sharing process as the sponsor and the new person is following the sharing process. So you can say, hey, by the way, where is Mary in the sharing process? And Susie, Susie, now you're my team member. Wouldn't that be nice? So then Susie says, um, well, I sent a video on Tuesday. Great, when are you following up? Uh, See, then it's good. Then you know how to help them because you realize the problem is they didn't set up a follow-up. So after ensuring, um, sharing the story and then saying, if I would you, the next step is setting a trap for yourself, right? It's setting up that follow-up. And I get it. We could talk an hour about how weird that feels. Let's just be real for a second. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to set up a follow-up because it's my friend. That's too formal. That's weird. Is there anybody who ever feels like that or is it just me? I know it can feel that way. It just takes a shift in your mindset to realize that when you get your hair cut and they ask if you're ready to, if you will set up the next appointment, you don't get the time to see it because you have the right to say no. But it's very professional that they do that. When the dentist's office does that, it's professional. It saves you time. We are going to be a professional and we're going to, to set up the follow up. So you set up a mutual agreement on when you're going to follow up together. And here's the little thing that's going to add a little secret sauce to that. Ready? When you're setting up the follow-up, you could say something like, hey, and by the way, when I check back with you Thursday at 2, I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try my best to get one of my friends who I work with to be on with me. Isn't that good? Because then you don't have to go, hey, would you be open to a three-way call? Yeah, They're going to go, what? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to try my best, but I don't know if you can. She's so amazing, or he's so awesome. He has the best mm -hmm. story. I get to listen and learn. You get to ask questions. It's going to be win-win, and people love it. Awesome. I don't know if I can, but if I, I'll try my best to get somebody on when we check out Thursday at 2 o'clock. Great. And then the next thing is you've got to actually follow up. You follow up exactly when we said we would. Now, I get it. People in this society are noncommittal. People can be flaky, and it is what it is. But you don't be flaky. You're going to be that thermostat like we learned at the last conference, not a thermometer. <laughs> and you're going to follow up exactly Thursday at 2. And if they don't answer, right, you're going to say something like, hey, uh, what, it doesn't matter how you're reaching out, messenger, phone call, whatever. Hey, Susie, I'm following 
one, that's like a frown up. Thursday at two, something must have come up, no big deal, right? Then you don't just go, bye. That's what I used to do. What you want to say is then you're going to have a next step. You want to have a clear future that they know is going to happen next. So I'm going to check back with you um, tomorrow if I haven't heard from you and uh, figure out the best time for you. I hope you're having a great day. And by the way, don't feel bad about it. Life happens. It's not a big deal at all. If by chance you didn't answer because you haven't watched the videos or something or you're worried about like hurting my feelings, please trust me. This isn't about me. It's about you. So no worries. Okay? Make them feel really good instead of making them feel bad. So then when we do follow up, um, and I get that that chase game can happen where you feel like you're chasing. If you're following up over and over and you're like, oh, please, yeah, I literally can't take any more. I mean, this is like Chinese wire torture. Like, Susie, would you just respond to me? I see you saw my Facebook message. I see that it's red. I see you read my text messages, right? I see you on Facebook, but yet you're not answering me. I get it, you guys. You're going to, like, want to pull your hair out sometimes. Just laugh about it and know that it's okay because guess what? Susie, your prospect, is not excited about you as plus like you are. Or this business, you know why? Because they don't know what you know. Give them some grace. They aren't immersed in this like we are. They haven't been brainwashed like we have. <laughs> they don't get it. So be, it's okay. It's okay. If you tried to sell me some kitchen utensils, I'll tell you what, I'll probably avoid you for the next three months. I just don't think I'm interested in that right now. But I might be polite, right? So maybe that's what's happening. So give them some grace. But here's something I do that I, I <laughs> not all of you will be, be willing to do this, but when it gets a little awkward and you're going on and on, like you're messaging, let's say five times, I do what Julie Herbst calls the breakup message, and I put my own spin on it. And I might or might not, I may or may not say something like this. Okay, Susie, at this point, one of three things has happened. You either changed your mind and you don't know how to tell me, or you've been trampled by an elephant or abducted by aliens. I I'm not really sure which is it. <laughs> I literally say that to people, and they always come back and go, ha, 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 so sorry, I've been super busy, right? I just lighten the mood so it's easy for the follow-up, and I almost always get them back that way. Or you could do a breakup message and say, sometimes I've done this, Susie, here's the truth. I'm feeling like a stalker, and stalking is illegal. And people being stalked don't like their stalker very much, so... I'm wondering if we should just sort of table this conversation because when you're ready, you know where to find me. I'll circle back in about three months. That works too. All right, so when you actually do get Susie on the line, you're just asking those three simple questions. What did you like best? Tell me what you learned. I'm so excited to hear. And are you ready to get started? Whether it's about the product or the business, they're waiting to be invited. So I'm going to share with you that then after what, and I hope, hope that was helpful to you, by the way. So um, my story that I'm going to share now leads into um, the next person who's going to share with us. So a few years ago, when we talk about fear, we talk about assumptions, and we talk about highlight reel, and we talk about the sharing process, it all is going to come together with this super quick story. So a few years ago, I went to the, the most powerful women in network marketing conference in Las Vegas, uh, Eric Worre, again, kind of a common theme here. And I saw someone on stage, and the short version is she said something that really, really, really like rocked me to the core. And she said, if someone had not shared this business, you know, she said, someone was my rep for my product, whatever the company was, it doesn't matter, for years, and never shared the business opportunity with me. And they thought I was too cool, they thought I was too educated, they thought I was too rich. She was, but what they didn't know was behind the scenes, I needed this business. Who in your life? is me for you. I grabbed my phone and I tried to do voice messages and, and talk mostly, but I texted. And I texted who you're gonna hear from next. I sent a text to Holly Winning. And to me, Holly Winning, now remember I had done all this personal growth and had held these breakthroughs and everything was getting so much better. We all still have what I call head trash. I looked at Holly and I thought, oh yeah, she's a dream team member of mine, but I may be a you know 39 club national marketing director, blah, 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 but she's way better than me. She's gorgeous. She's educated. She's well-spoken. Everybody loves her. She's like the chicken, biggest chicken on my chicken list, right? I didn't know her very well. We were sort of friends. I had hinted about Juice Plus. She didn't take the bait, but I sent her a text and I said, here's the deal, Holly. I have no idea how this is going to land for you, 
but this is why I'm not going to keep this from you. Would you be open to looking at partnering with me on an amazing mission and a business? And I know you're already successful and it may end up being a no, but if it is, it's a win-win because then you'll feel complimented and realize how highly I think of you and I will have gotten over my fear. What do you say? And she texted back immediately and said, Jill, I would be honored. What you don't know is, and then she gave me her behind the scenes. Mm. And now she's my team member. So come on over, Holly. Wow. <laughs> so this is Holly winning. <laughs> oh, I'm so honored uh, to be here sharing with you. And uh, Jill sent me that text message, and I was so flattered. Uh, and um, and I said yes because what Jill didn't know is with all of my success in education, and, and my husband uh, is an educator as well. Um, we have a lot of school loan debt, and we are educators, and that doesn't match up. Uh, my husband's getting his PhD, and the bills are so big, we weren't even talking about them. And so uh, this came at a time in my family when I really, really needed this, and it allowed us to start to dream again, and that was so exciting. And so um, so I started. I got started, and um, it became much harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, I had a hard time sharing with people. I would dip in and out of Voxer. I would, I called it turning into a possum. I would freeze. And I didn't know why, because I had had this um, other life of, of, of success and um, comfort. And, uh, and so it took me time. I had to really dig in. And what I didn't realize was that I was really living in fear. Uh, and Jill was very patient with me. She didn't um, say anything. She didn't pressure me, but she re would remind me of my goals. You know, you told me this is what you want. Why? What do you think is getting in your way? She had the best questions, and I really had to dig in um, with personal development. And so during this time, my initial 30 days came and went. My first 60 days came and went. My first 90 days came and went, and I ha wasn't reaching my 2,000 plus. I wasn't, um, those things weren't happening for me, and I had to restart. And, and that was okay, because I had to do um, some really big internal work. And I had to get really uncomfortable and walk through some things. And so I had to really just focus on putting one foot in front of the other. Um, one thing, getting little wins for myself and uh, reading books and learning so much and, um, and listening to trainings, plugging in. I never unplugged. Um, I always went to our team trainings and, and uh, listened to that on Zoom. I would pull up trainings from Linda Evenden. I would pull up uh, Kira Westwick's Boss Babe talks uh, and really um, read Go pro, listen to that again. Um, you are a badass, you are a badass at making money, the big leap, all of these things um, worked together um, to, in synthesis for me. I needed every single one. And so once I was able to uh, really figure out and get rid of what Jill was talking about, that head trash that I didn't even realize I had, um, I was then able to uh, share and go through that sharing process and not be terrified and not freeze and feel really confident. I was able to um, disconnect from the outcome and I was able to measure success differently than I had before. Before success would have meant, uh, you know, how many orders I got or how many team I brought on. But I, that, that uh, measure changed for me. And it wasn't about the outcome, it was about reaching out to as many people as I could and remembering my why. Uh, I lost my mom when I was 30 and had a new baby and, and she was 55. Mm -hmm. And it's so I want um, to keep moms with their daughters as long as I possibly can. And if I and that so that's not about me. So I had to figure out that it's not about me at all. And my job is to share, um, is to present this gift and be ready to support 
people when they're ready to receive it. And once I surrender to that and surrender to uh, our amazing system that works, so I, and I had to figure out, okay, this isn't working for me. It's not because of the system, because we know it works. Here's all the people it works for. It's actually about me. Um, once I figured that out, uh, I was ready to build a team and get started and find success. And that reminds me of a quote we heard um, at the Philly uh, at the Philly summit, when the coach is ready, the team appears. And mm -hmm. as soon as I figured myself out, I brought on uh, my sister-in-law, Jenny Wingate, who uh, she was a fa she's fast and she's amazing. And um, I would not have been ready to support her had I not done uh, what I had done. So this business has given me the gift of self-confidence, um, being self-aware, and it has truly been a gift I am so thankful for, and I will share um, until there is no breath left to share. Mm. So wow. thank you so much for, wow. for having me. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jill and Holly. Y'all are awesome. Oh, my gosh. Your story, um, Holly, is beautiful, and I love how it just rolled right in with what Jill was sharing. And I took so many nuggets from Jill, and everybody in here was like, Oh, I love that word, verbiage. So thank you, Jill, and thank you, Holly, so much. And I know your journey is just beginning, Holly, so the best is going to come for her, right? Okay, so all right, you guys, we're going to take um, a quick break, bathroom break, before our final speaker. Um, Holly, I haven't muted Jill yet. If you can just push the mute, mute button, Jill, on you so I can just close us out here for a 10-minute break. Um, so 10 minutes, um, and then come back because... Heather's got uh, another...